who goes to this church now? When Governor Morris II um, gave the deed to the church, he said to the, uh, to the church, Episcopal Church Organization, that it always must be used for church purposes, otherwise the land reverts to the Morris family. And a few years ago, the bishop of the, uh, of the Protestant Episcopal Church of New York, uh, considering the size of the congregation, which is very small, uh, was considering the possibility of closing up St. Anne's, Governor Morris Helfenstein uh, immediately went to, uh, uh, went to Governor Morris, who was the descendant of the Governor Morris, who was very ill, said, you have the rights to this church, uh, sign it over to me. He took those rights, he went to uh, the, the bishop of the Episcopal Church and said, listen, if you close that church, I'm getting the land back. And immediately, the, uh, the church policy is always to keep this open. Say, so that's the, that's the way things work these days. <laughs> okay, so this is a very, very historic site. Uh, the playground over here was put in in the 1960s uh, in an attempt to try to get the, uh, uh, you know, for neighborhood relations uh, so that uh, people are in the neighborhood can, uh, the kids in the neighborhood can use uh, this empty area as a playground as well. So it's an historic site, but it's also a used site and a usable site. Uh, the parish house. Uh, was, uh, was built in 1916 and an extension was put on in the 1950s so that uh, that is also used uh, by people in the neighborhood. Okay? A strange totem pole is a, uh, is a carving. Uh, that's all it is. It's a piece of sculpture. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, just to the north of that totem pole, I don't know if you noticed it as we passed by, there is a, um, a marble, a thick marble slab dedicated to Lewis Morris, the signer of the Declaration of Independence. That was put up here by the, the school children of the city of New York uh, in the 1930s who paid pennies, literally pennies, to put it up here. And it's been there ever since, just notifying people that the signer of the Declaration of Independence is uh, buried here. Okay? All right, now we're standing on 141st Street, just west of St. Anne's Avenue. And across the street, you see a playground, which isn't exactly the important thing. Beyond the playground, you see a very small little shack. And on top of the shack, a Puerto Rican flag is flying. Up until about 10 years or so ago, there stood on that site a sculpture studio. A sculpture studio that was built and used by the Piccarilli brothers. The Piccarilli brothers were nine brothers from, who were immigrants from Pisa in Italy. Now, they had studied uh, sculpture over in Italy, and they came over here to practice their craft. They specialized in monumental sculpture, and believe it or not, you might have seen one of their things around New York City. If you go down to Columbus Circle and the entrance at Central Park at Columbus Circle, you have the monument to the battleship Maine, and on the, uh, there's a prow of the ship sticking out and some marble figures on, on that prow. That was done by the Piccarilli Studio. However, probably the most famous statue that they ever did was not here. Uh, however, they got the commission to do it. Uh, they knew all of the major sculptors uh, in the United States, and one of their dear friends was Daniel Chester French, who had a very important commission uh, from the federal government to make a statue. And uh, indeed, Daniel Chester French designed the statue, but it was supposed to be of monumental proportions, and he knew that the Piccarellis uh, actually specialized in, the, uh, in monumental statuary. Consequently, he commissioned them to do the job based upon his models. And they took uh, 26 blocks of Georgia granite to fashion the statue and put it on 13 flatbed railroad cars to bring it down to Washington, D.C. And they assembled it where it is today in Washington. That statue is the statue of Abraham Lincoln in the Lincoln Memorial. And it was sculptured right over there on that site. Okay. All right, now we're going to go still further, almost Alexander Avenue. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, we're on 141st Street, just to the east of Alexander Avenue. And this is the start of what is called the Mott Haven Historic District, which was designated by the New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission in 1969. Now, here, in one place, in one street, you will find the best of the old Mott Haven. A series of row houses, some apartment houses, two churches, a police precinct station, and a library. Now, in the late 19th century and in the early 20th century, this is the area where wealthy Irish doctors lived, 
And because of that, the street got its nickname of the Irish Fifth Avenue. Uh, however, the district includes not just Alexander Avenue, but also some of the buildings on the side streets as well. And we'll start with these two right here, uh, 342 and 340 East 141st Street. These are two two-story brick houses. They were both designed by J.F. Burroughs for Fannie L. Cole. They were built between 1883 and 1884, and they were designed in the then fashionable Queen Anne style. Uh, there are stained, there's stained glass in the transom, and that uh, stained glass window uh, has a pattern that is carried out over the main doorway. Uh, the ornament is uh, made out of terracotta, and if you look on the second floor, uh, you will find there are animal heads uh, sticking out on top uh, just below the pilasters over there. Uh, the ironwork that you find right here is the original ironwork. This dates back from uh, the 1880s. Okay? Now, over here, 338, it doesn't look any different from the uh, building next door, but it is different. Uh, it was designed by Frank Ward as the parsonage of the Alexander Avenue Baptist Church in 1901 and 1902. And the fact that it does look like it's the same building is deliberate. It is designed to harmonize with the church, which is what we're going to see next. All right, now right over here is well, the building that was originally called the Alexander Avenue Baptist Church, today called the Tercera Iglesia Bautista, which means the Third Baptist Church. Uh, it was built between 1900 and 1902. Uh, designed by Ward and Davis, and uh, at the time, uh, the style was extremely modern. Uh, it is stark and it is simple, but it's uh, rich in detail in both the top and the bottom of the building. Uh, put it all together, uh, considering the ethnic change that happened in the area uh, in the late 40s and early 50s, it does have a slight Spanish feeling to it. Uh, the main entrance and the tower are located right at the corner rather than on either Alexander Avenue or 141st Street. And uh, the tower becomes increasingly ornate as it gets to the top. Uh, and uh, it has a very Baroque feeling by the time you get up there. Uh, the belfry is open, and although you can't see it this close to the building, uh, you have the, uh, a copper dome uh, right on top of the corner. All right, now we're going to continue down Alexander Avenue between 141st Street and 140th Street. And first, we'll take a look on what is this side of Alexander Avenue and then what is on the other side. So first, we go down here. Uh, this is uh, 314 Alexander Avenue, a three-story brick house. It was designed by Joseph T. Dennis for himself. The guy who designed it lived here. It was designed in 1887. And uh, he consciously designed this building to harmonize with the other buildings that were already built on the block. Uh, the only major difference between this building and the other buildings is the treatment over the doorway. See, so here we have a straight line over on the others. There are pediments. Now, if you take a look at the others, you will find that uh, from 302 to 312 Alexander Avenue, all of the buildings look like they, uh, they were built at the same time. They were not. The six brick houses were all designed by the same man. They were designed by Andrew J. O'Dell, but they were not built at the same time. The three at the southern end uh, were built between 1880 and 1881, and they were designed by John Rogers, and, uh, uh, and uh, the rest were built eight years later, between 1888 and 1889 and they were designed by another architect completely, B.E. Lowe. The style of these buildings is called French neo Grec. Uh, the railings that you see on these stoops are made out of cast iron. They, uh, the newel posts are monumental, uh, but the, on the, on, beneath the hand railings, you have very, very slender spindles that uh, flare out at the bottom. But those are the, that's the original ironwork, okay? Uh, now, if you look across the street uh, at the corner, uh, that 